This is a robot. <laughs> this is what most typical factory robots look like. It has multiple links connected one after another in series. So this is called a serial robot. Uh, basically, the structure of a human arm is largely the inspiration for this type of design. And we often refer to their parts with anatomical terms, such as shoulder, elbow, and wrist. But if we can make robots that imitate human arms but exceed human capabilities, what about other types of anatomy? Uh, animals with a long vertebrate structure have incredible dexterity, enabling them to navigate through tight winding corridors or move their heads through angles impossible for humans to imitate. So researchers have developed hyper-redundant serial robots that employ a large number of serial links to try to achieve these things. And this is a snake-like robot from Howie Chosett's group at Carnegie Mellon uh, that can slither and even climb trees by wrapping itself around the trunk and rolling itself up. So if we can make robots that copy vertebrate structures, what about anatomy that has no bones at all but is continuously flexible and even more dexterous? These structures are called muscular hydrostats. An octopus can squeeze through impossibly tiny openings, yet it is still strong enough to open the lids of jars. <coughs> so this idea has led to the creation of what we call continuum robots. Uh, they don't have joints or links at all, but instead have a flexible structure that can bend and twist at any point. And we can control this bending and twisting in a number of ways. This continuum robot, like many others, is controlled by pulling a tendon wire that runs along its length. Continuum robots are also highly miniaturizable, and thus they have uh, tremendous potential to improve robotic surgery. Uh, while current robotic surgical tools are large and rigid and straight with limited dexterity, this needle-sized continuum robot made of concentric precurved tubes can guide surgical tools along winding paths and manipulate tissue in a minimally invasive way. But how can we design and control these continuum robots? Uh, their shapes are complex and influenced by many factors. And the answer lies in some mathematics that was developed by the Kosarat brothers in the 1700s. We can use their mathematical models and adapt them uh, to simulate how a continuum robot will, will behave, and thus informs our strategies for design and control. So this approach actually works quite well. Uh, in this figure, you can see the helical shape of a continuum robot after one of its tendons has been pulled, and then after a tip load has been applied. And the figure shows that our model prediction of this shape is almost exactly the same as the experimentally measured uh, points along the shape. But not all robots are serial. Uh, this kind of robot has its links connected to each other in parallel. Um, <clears throat> a crab or a spider with its feet glued to the floor might be a biological parallel here. Uh, each link can independently change its length, which then moves the top platform around in space. And parallel robots have a smaller range of motion than serial robots, but they are stronger and more precise. So serial robots have a large range, and parallel robots are strong and precise, and continuum robots are flexible, dexterous, and miniaturizable. But there's kind of a missing quadrant in this design space. Could continuum robots also be parallel? What would such robots look like? So this is what our research is in. We're developing a new category of robots called continuum parallel, or sorry, parallel continuum robots. Uh, so these have multiple compliant links connected in parallel and resemble flexible multi-legged creatures like octopi and jellyfish. And we hope that by filling this fourth quadrant, we can create robots that are small and flexible, yet strong and precise. So how do they work? Uh, well, instead of the legs actually changing lengths, we can use linear actuators to push and pull the legs through holes in a base platform. And this moves the end effector <coughs> by changing their effective length above the platform. And using this simple idea, we were able to construct tiny parallel robots, uh, both 5 and mil 10 millimeters in diameter. So here's a demonstration of our first large-scale prototype. As you can see, it's very flexible. <coughs> I've never been, uh, I've been hurt by uh, a few of my robots before, and, but never by this one. Um, it has a good range of motion in all six degrees of freedom, including twisting, bending, and translating. <coughs> So we'd like to know how to design and control these robots, and this is where our mathematical modeling comes into play again. Uh, Model-based simulation of these designs allows us to look at global properties like the set of all points that the robot can reach and the angular dexterity at every reachable point. We can also study local properties for any particular robot configuration. So these ellipses depict how easily the robot moves in various directions when we actuate it, and in the middle picture depicts how easily it moves uh, into various directions when forces are applied to it. And on the far right, 
uh, the ellipse shows that we can actually detect external forces on the robot merely by measuring the uh, forces at the base of each leg. We can also use our modeling to understand the stability of the robot's shape during operation. In certain configurations, the robot can become dynamically unstable, uh, and our model prediction breaks down at this point. Uh, fortunately, we can examine certain properties within the model to detect when this will happen. So here's an example. Uh, when the curve on the right touches the horizontal line, uh, the robot will become unstable. So we know that this is actually an unstable configuration that we want to avoid. Uh, and the cap capability to detect instability allows us to design robots that won't become unstable or to avoid unstable configurations during operation. So the application that most of this research is focused on is robot-assisted minimally invasive endoscopic surgery. The basic concept behind this is that a long, flexible endoscope uh, would snake through natural passages in the body <coughs> to reach remote locations where surgery is required. Uh, then a dexterous parallel continuum robot can extend from the tip to dexterously work in the confined space. So we've built a first prototype of this system, which has a cable-actuated gripper and effector. It has six legs made from, made from hollow nitinol tubes and four cables that pass through the tube legs. Uh, ten linear actuators control all the translations and the end effector can achieve a full range of motion uh, plus grasping behavior. So the end result is that a user can remote con remotely control this robot using an input device, uh, shown here an Xbox controller. This is a peg transfer task which is a standard assessment of dexterity for surgical robots. So if all goes well, this parallel robot could be coming soon to an operating room near you, though I sincerely hope that you won't need it. Yeah.